Peace, love, and light, y'all. Peace, love, and light. How is everybody doing on today? Come on in. Come on in. Um, I was just out in nature. And I was about to teach a class. And I looked at the clock and it was 444. And when I seen the time on the clock, I told myself, I got to stop. I got to stop. Literally, about to teach a class on meditation and everything. I was ready. Had everybody together. Um, yeah, y'all just sit right there. I had everybody together. And we was about to start class. And 444 caught my attention. And I had to stop. And I had to come in and deliver the message to y'all what Spirit gave to me. And that's what Spirit is saying. Sometimes he shows y'all symbols and you're not paying no attention to what he's doing. Um, sometimes God tries to grasp your attention to give you an important message. And a lot of times we'll listen and then we'll just say, oh, no, we'll keep going. We don't actually dive in to what he was saying. And on today, I stopped everything that I was doing, literally two minutes away from starting this class. And when I seen 444, I had to stop everything I was doing. Now, first, angel number 444. And if you've also been seeing 444, like this video. I hope y'all are having a blessed day. Please, yes, like this video and share it. Even if you plan to not listen, like and share it. You never know you sharing that message whose life it actually touched. Somebody might have needed that word. This is a message for my women. If you have a friend that is down or a woman that you know is going through something, share or send this video to her. Share the link copy the link send it to your friend that is going through a state of anxiety or depression there's a woman that will watch this video who is battling anxiety and depression right now and i want you to know that everything is going to be okay um share this video um 444 protection knowing that whatever you go through it is something that is guiding you and leading you I want you to understand that is 444. Mm, 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 mm. It's a powerful number. It's letting you know that you have angels that are working for the betterment of your good at this time. 444. I seen it and I had to stop everything. And I came out in nature. I'm not going to be before y'all long. I'm not doing a reading today. I probably will hold up 10 minutes of your time. Um, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. This scripture stuck with me so hard. Um, sometimes when you see 444 or 333 or 222, you literally have to stop yourself in your tracks. Any synchronicity, anytime you see a synchronicity like that, it is the angels trying to grasp your attention about something. And it's okay if you don't know. But go to God in prayer. Go to God in meditation and ask God, God, what are you really trying to say? So I ask God, you know, God, what are you really trying to say? In the scripture, <laughs> John chapter 4, and you can read it in its entirety. But in John chapter 4, Jesus was sitting by the well. And in John chapter 4, it talks about how he uses an unclean woman. And the woman just had faith in God and he blessed her. So this video may be for an unclean woman at a point in time. I was very unclean myself. So let me say before I tell you anything, know that I went through it too. And again, I find myself the same way I was sitting by. Oh, well, I find myself coming back to the water, coming back to source, coming back to connecting to where I can find God. But um, Jesus was on his journey and he started learning that they were baptizing more and more people. And um, it was the disciples that were baptizing. So Jesus had to go to Galilee. Now, mind you. Jesus 
couldn't even preach in his own hometown. Um, so I want you to know there are some prophets that are being birthed in this year, this season. And I want you to know in order to fully embrace your gift, you have to leave home. I want you to know in order for people to really hear you, to hear your voice, you got to leave home. There's somebody you are chasing God and you are pursuing him and you are wanting to do work for him. But every time you try, it's your loved ones that put you down. Every time that you try, it's the ones that are too busy stuck in your past to see where you are going in your future. Lord Jesus, it is somebody watching this. You are wanting to just teach people out about God, whether that's through prophecy, teaching, preaching, whatever it is. You're wanting to do it, but so many stumbling blocks are in your way because people can't see where God has brought you through. I want you to know it's time to get up, break those chains, and it's time to leave that hometown. God couldn't even do his own works in his own hometown. Yeah. The mystic, the shaman that God was, people didn't understand those works. And any time that people don't understand what you're doing, they'll say that it's of the devil. And it don't be. It's just because they don't understand. So I'm here to encourage somebody. You are teaching and leading people and some don't understand. And it's okay if they say what you're doing is devilish. Keep on doing what you got to do to touch these souls. Because just remember, anytime you feel low, you feel bad, remember what Jesus had to go through. Okay? Jesus couldn't even preach and teach in his own hometown. The same person that died on the cross after people still in his own hometown could not allow him to be who he wanted to be. He still died on the cross for us. So just know... I always remember what Jesus went through, but I'm going to keep going. Jesus was on his journey and he had to go through his hometown. Couldn't even teach family and friends, had to keep going. And he went through his hometown and he found this little town called Sikart. And it was so amazing. He stopped through Sikart and he noticed this well. And mind you, he was so tired. So he stopped along his journey at this well. And next thing you know, this woman comes along, this unclean woman. This unclean woman comes along and she stops to get her water. And God asks her for a drink. <laughs> and they get to talking about that water. And long story short, God ends up telling her he was the I am. I am he. The man that you speak of, God, I am him. And she was so shocked. And during this time, see, God, or Jesus, excuse me, Jesus, all of them, they were Jews. So it's so funny when I hear Christians say that Jews is not, that's not God. But just remind yourself, Jesus was a Jew. Let me, let me remind all of you who you are. If you are a child of God, if you are for God, for Jesus, you are a Jew, not a Samaritan. So people, remember that one rule. That's one of the main lessons of this passage. Are you a Jew or a Samaritan? What are you? But the woman thought because she was a Samaritan that God didn't want to have nothing to do with her. And God had to remind that woman he still uses people. She thought because she was unclean that God wouldn't use her and God still used her. So there's somebody you are searching for God and you feel because you're not clean right now that he won't use you. God will use you. Everything that you are going through, every bit of depression and anxiety that you are going through, God still can use you. The woman just, it, it was amazing how she thought because she wasn't clean. God, God loved that woman at the well on that day. And that's what I'm saying. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to go to church every Sunday for God to use you. 
God can take a crackhead. God can take a homeless person. God can take a child to teach you a lesson. Don't ever get too big and boastful to remember that in this life, we all still have lessons. Please like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. God is always going to teach us lessons in life. No matter how big we get, no matter how far we go, God is always teaching us a lesson. God used the woman at the well, an unclean woman. And a lot of times we stand in the seat of judgment as a hypocrite. Being a hypocrite, judging other people and not knowing that you can't be in the seat of judgment. That's not you. That's God. God has to judge people at the end of the day. Stop living in the seat of a hypocrite. And know that God can still use you. I sit by the water. <laughs> Just like Jesus and that woman did. To come back to the source. To remind myself that no matter what comes your way. God can use you. Um, in my life I was raised around a lot of hypocritical people. And I didn't really understand that until I got older. And I got away and I realized that. The walk with Jesus is not as hard as people make it. Um, the walk with him is the easiest thing in the world that you can do. Um, every day won't be good. Every day is not going to be the perfect little golden walk. But the more you keep going, the more God pushes you to see your real worth, your real potential. And I want you to know, forgive yourself. I don't know who this message is for. Forgive yourself. You have lived in the seat of judgment of others, right? And it's so sad because it's the ones that you love for a long time. And you feel like God can't use you. And I want you to know today, whoever this message is for, God still can use you. Let me continue going along with the message. God took that woman and she and, and he she transformed her just by her believing, having the mustard seed of a faith. When God told her, I am he that you speak of, she didn't question it no more. She knew. She took off. And let me tell you something. The same unclean spirit that God used to be a messenger, to be a vessel for him to work through, that same unclean woman, she went back into her hometown and she gathered more people than the disciples even gathered. She gathered more people than anybody could have ever gathered. The same unclean spirit. Oh, God. Whew. Did you understand what I just said? The same unclean spirit. God used her. And she went and got more people than anybody had ever gotten to come to God. So I want you to understand one thing. All of you hypocrites, all of you people that sit out there in the seat of judgment, while you sitting in your seat right now judging, I want you to remember one thing. God will use an unclean spirit and transform him into a clean spirit and use that person to bring people to Christ. And you can have so many other leaders and teachers that have tried, but it might just take this unclean spirit to save humanity. So all of my people out there that feel that you can't do it, yes, you can do it. You ain't got to be perfect. You smoke, you drink, hey, that's on you. Still praise God. Find time out of that drink or that blunt to praise God. Go back to the source. Nobody can stand in the seat of judgment because everybody has an addiction. And let me tell you something. Those of you that judge people because of what they do, oh, they smoke and they try to go to church. Oh, they drink and they try to talk about God. Oh, this, oh, that. <laughs> Remember, God took the most dirtiest, filthiest people in the world and made them into disciples. Don't you ever forget that. And don't you forget... <laughs> Sometimes it'll be a drunk that'll teach you a lesson at the bar that you needed to hear. God will use whatever. God is magical, a mystic. We can't see him, but how he works is amazing. So all of my women out there, adjust your crowns. Know your worth and know that God still can use you in his temple. Go by the water. Go be by the well. Get back to the source. And then I meant to tell you guys at the well, the um, woman 
God told her, he said, you've had five husbands. And the man you with now, he ain't even your husband. It's time to cut off some people during this season. Some people can't go with you where you're going. And I'm, 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 let me repeat what I just said. Jesus told a woman, you've had five husbands and the one you with now ain't even your husband. The husband that you have now is not even your husband. So just know that somebody is out there listening to this message and the person you with, that ain't even who God got for you. And you holding on to it for dear life, tired, miserable, ready to give up. God says it's time to give up. He's been working on your kingdom husband for a while now. Give it up. Find yourself. Self-love, self-worth. Some of you is so sick of being in a relationship, but you're afraid to be by yourself. And that's okay. But just know, anything that God do, it starts in the dark. So when God has to deal with you, he has to start in a dark place. And I want you to know, everything will be okay. Isolate yourself. Cut out relationships that don't mean you no good. And come back to the source. And know that he can use you still. Know that God loves you. Go sit by the water. Reconnect to the heaven. Allow him to talk to you. Allow him to touch your heart and cleanse your spirit. Just like he cleansed that un unclean woman's spirit at the well. The woman ran off and reached more people than the disciples could. And with this parable, what God is saying, sometimes an unclean person can bring more people to God than the, than the bishop can. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes the unclean person can bring more people to Christ than the bishop can. So don't stand in the seat of judgment. Go sit by the well and hear yourself from God. And those of you that feel like you don't have nobody to guide you, nobody to, to lean on, lean on God. Lean on God. Stop leaning on people. Put your trust not in man, but put your trust in God. You don't need to talk to the fallen. Stop standing in the seat of judgment. It's not cute. It's people out here that's really going through things and they don't have nobody to talk to. They can't even come and talk to the bishop because they smoke or they drink or they do this and they don't want to be judged. Stop standing in the seat of judgment. You are not God. And each of you know that you are protected out here. Know that there is one, one universal creator. We all are seeds of the creator, gods and goddesses. So understand Jesus was a Jew and he touched that Samaritan woman at that well, an unclean spirit. And once again, she brought more people to Christ than the disciples did. She took herself up and ran off chasing after God and bringing other people to Christ. So God wants to use you one today. So there is a woman that's watching this and you just feel God can't use you. It's like you're tired and you've been wanting to give up and you know there's a God, but you feel like God won't hear you because you're not clean. Know that if you just go and talk to him and confess your sins, he's making you clean the day that you confess. Sometimes he just wants to hear you. That's all. Go and sit by the water. Get yourself clean. And know that everything is going to be all right. Some people in this life, they can reap all the rewards and all the benefits. And all the sometimes the people that put in the most hardest work, they don't get a blessing. And they feel like giving up. And there's somebody at this time you want to give up. And God is saying, don't give up understand that i'm about to be a change so know that some people plant spiritual seeds there are a lot of people right now that are planting spiritual seeds you just can't see it and you've had stuff growing for over 20 years while as some people get the fast way out they get all this success and the fame some and god says it in this chapter towards the end some people were here to plant spiritual seeds and some were to reap the harvest of the people that planted those seeds. So what he was saying is some people will cheat their way through. 
But if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he will see you through. And there will be a reward. There's somebody, it's a big reward coming your way. Have the faith and have the strength to know that God can and he will see you through. Have the courage to know that God is working a way out for you. Ooh, look at all them spirits. <laughs> God, understand that God is talking to you right now and he's letting you know, I will see you through. So to the women that are trying to build a relationship with God, even my men, if you are trying to build a relationship with God, go sit by the well. Go sit by the water. And wait for God to tell you something. I wanted to show you guys one other thing before I left. That's all I'm going to say. Let God use you. And understand, he still hears a sinner's prayer. And it might be you, a sinner, to save humanity. Mm, 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 mm. Some people feel like that they're entitled to things. The power of entitlement is a dangerous thing. I wanted to show you guys something real quick. Now, I've been sitting out here. And as you can see, nothing has bloomed, right? Ooh, look at all that energy. Look at all that energy. Nothing's blown. And look, I just noticed. Three. The power of three. Nothing else is nowhere, as you can see, right? Nothing. One, two, three. The power of three. Mind, body, and spirit. I want you to know God is bringing balance back to somebody's mind, body, and spirit. Balance is coming for you. You felt out of place for so long. You felt your head was over here, your body over there, your spirit over there. Everything is just out of balance. No, God's bringing peace, balance back to your mind, body, and your spirit. That is all I have for today. I love you. Peace, love, and light. Healing with Queen. We're open.